What time do they say they're coming in? Soon. S soon? How soon? Soon. How soon is soon? Before two. Before two? What is that? Quarter to two? Ten to two? Five Before to two? Before two. You didn't get a proper time out of them, did you? Before two. Before two. You know, they're probably at a dinner party. They're at a dinner party and we're here, freezing our nuts off. A hundred grand. What? A hundred grand? Yes. Small bills? Yes. Bound in elastic? Yes. Untraceable? Yes. Have you set the video? Yes. Will you calm down? Think of something else. Almost didn't make it tonight. The car wouldn't start. Still got the old Ford? Yeah. Never sell it. <laughs> no. The wife wanted a quiet night in. Kids are all asleep. I've been working so hard these past few weeks, I've hardly spent any time with her lately. She looked at me with those come-to-bed eyes. Well, that's when you thought, I'm off. <laughs> nah. As I was leaving, James woke up and came out of his room to ask me if I'd read him a bedtime story. God, of all the nights. Any other night, I would have done. You know, I got this feeling something's telling me I shouldn't be here. The car, the wife, James. Could have to get me one of those one day. Hmm? What? The family. Hmm. How are the kids? They're fine. Ellie's gonna be six on Monday. Yeah? Yeah. She's cute. How old's Jake? Ten. Ten? Yeah. Seems like only yesterday we were at the christening. <laughs> you told me you choked yesterday. What was it again? Oh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> There's this traveller, and he wanders into this small town, right? And he notices that everyone in town is running around him in a panic. One man shouts at him, telling him he must run for his life because there is a flood heading into town and they all must leave before it's too late. So anyway, this traveller, who has 100% faith in God, tells the man that he will do no such thing, because he has faith in God and God will save him. So he continues to calmly stroll down the road. Now, time goes on, and by now the water is up to the traveller's hip, and this man in a rowing boat rows up to him and shouts, Jump in, son! I'll save you! But the traveller says, No, I have faith in God. He will save me. So the man in the boat rows away. Anyway, more time passes, and by now the water is up to the, the traveller's neck. Yeah? <laughs> and this helicopter comes flying over, the doors open, this man throws down a rope and shouts, Grab onto the rope, son, we'll save you! But the traveller says, No, don't mind me, I have faith in God, he will save me. So the helicopter flies away, and the traveller drowns. So anyway, the traveller, who's in heaven now, is confused. And he sees God, and he, and he runs up to him, and he says, Lord, what happened? You told me that if I had faith in you, you would save me. Uh, I, I, I did have faith in you, and, and you didn't even lift a finger to help me. And God says, God says, what are you talking about? I sent you a man, man a, a boat, boat and, and a helicopter. helicopter.
Right, don't tell me about music, right, man. I know about music, OK. You name me one jazz song that's played in a supermarket. What supermarket's got to do with classic songs? What well, supermarket's got to do with classic songs? I'll tell you what like supermarket... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, look, everybody knows that once a song is played in a public place, right, it's a classic, right? In a hotel lift, uh, Wimpy's, right? You can tell for sure that a song has become a masterpiece of musical writing because almost every time it's played in a public place, it's never the original piece. It's always done by some kind of James Last orchestra or something, right? You know what they say about imitation? That is the highest form of flattery. Anyway, now, how many times have you heard in a supermarket, I just called to say I love you, or to say you My point being that there are more classic songs in Motown than there are in jazz any day. And besides, all jazz sounds the same, and it will never be as popular as, like, uh, rock and roll, Motown, or heavy metal. So what you're trying to tell me is that if a song is played in a public place by James Last Orchestra, then it's a timeless piece of music writing, right? Yeah. So, Kylie Minogue's I Should Be So Lucky is a timeless piece of music, right? No, I'm not saying that. Why not? It's playing super long. Yeah, it's not a classic song. Well, what about the Birdie song? Mm -hmm. hmm? Star Trek? Are you taking the piss now? Agadoo, remember? Agadoo, do, do, push pineapple, shake the tree. <coughs> Let me run a few names by you. Miles Davis, Benny Goodman, Duke Ellington, and last but not least, the late, great Ronnie Scott. Who the bloody hell are they? I don't know any of them. What, are they as famous as, like, Salt to Salt? I don't fucking think so. But what, what about Stevie Wonder? Hey, what about George Michael? They are as famous. Bollocks. OK, then. Candy Dolphin. Who's she when she's at home? You know, she's the, the saxophone player with the nice legs we saw on MTV that time. Oh, yeah. Now, listen. If all jazz musicians looked like Candy Dolphin, then I would be a fan. Are you still thinking of quitting? Yep. I think about it all the time. You know why? Kerry. Kerry. I love it a bit, Lance. Aren't you worried? I mean, she's 22 and you're... You must be 30-odd. Age is nothing to do with it. So you really are in love, then? Yeah, for the first time in my life. But the syndicate, will they let you quit? I'll be out of town for a few days. This is the last job I'll ever do for them. Then I'm coming back for Kerry. We're getting on a plane and getting the hell out of this country. As far as I'm concerned, I'm retiring. We've known each other for quite some time now, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Well, you're the only true friend I've got. I'm going to miss you. Do me a favour while I'm away. Keep an eye on Kerry for me. Sorted. Thanks. You're a pal. This is for you. No. <laughs> Why is this shite? Uh, look, I, I can't take this. Um, look, when I finish writing this book about you, I, I'm going to have lots of money. <laughs> you daft twat. It's going to be a bestseller, I know it. Lance, when I finish this job, I'll have enough money to set Kerry and me up for life. Now, I know you're skimmed, and I want you to take it, please. Cheers, mate. You're a fucking nutter. <laughs> All this time, you knew what I did for a living. And you never told anyone. Why? You don't know why, man. No, enlighten me. I fucking love you, man. <laughs> Come on, lighten up. Do you want another drink? You know what I want? Chopper bike. Ooh. Do you remember those things with the three gears? Yeah, 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 they were cool. No, I'll tell you what, BMXs, they were cooler. I mean, chopper bikes, they went out with the Bay City Rollers. Ah, the Bay City Rollers, now they were cool. Cool. When did we as British people start using the word cool? I had the police shout freeze at me once. Ah, well, that's the American invasion, isn't it? You know, TV, films. Matt, you're on. Did you bring my sacks? Yeah. It's down there, mate.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're the Ipcris Files. This one's for my best friend, Lance. A real diamond geezer. Thank you. One, two, three. Transaction of ours has been violated. The details of the negotiation is in the envelope taped by the side of the phone. The killing zone is number six Harbour Yard, the warehouse near Chelsea Harbour. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You know whom we suspect, but we are only interested in the truth. The suspected targets are Lucas Finn and Perry Fenton, the couriers for this job. The interrogators will be along to assess the situation. When the guilty party is found, you will terminate. Make it clean. What the fuck they're gonna do to us, Finn? <laughs> Don't you know where we are? This place is owned by the Syndicate. Everyone knows if you're dragged in here for a reason, you ain't going out alive. <laughs> you wanted him, Fenton. <laughs> Your first job and you end up getting fucked. Mr. Fenton. Who is he? Who is he, Finn? Who the fuck is he, Finn? How should I know, you stupid twat? Oh, shit. Oh, God. You're here to kill us, aren't you? It's up, isn't it? I mean, we wouldn't still be breathing if you were here to kill us. Something is as you put it up, Mr. Finn. If that were not the case, then I can assure you you would both be dead by now. The only reason you are still alive is to be interrogated. I may look it, but I'm not. 
Now, I'm only going to tell you this once. When we got there, they were dead. No coke, no fucking idea, no shit! I have no interest in finding out who was responsible. I am here purely as an executioner. McCann. We're having a laugh here, aren't we? We're having a fucking laugh. You're my dog McCann. Mr. McCann, to you, Mr. Fenton. I'll be your interrogator for tonight. I'm sure both of you have heard a lot of grim stories about me. I can assure you, all of them are true. So when I tell you I'm going to get the truth by any means necessary, that means by any means I consider necessary. The Syndicate wants me to find out where 20 keys of pure cocaine has disappeared to, and who is responsible for killing Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston, my client's suppliers. As you two are the couriers on this job, my client can only assume that you, Mr. Finn, and you, Mr. Fenton, were the ones who disposed of Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston, then hid the coke to sell on in the near future. It's 8.40. I want to be out of here by 9. I have a dinner party to go to. So let's start the ball rolling, gents. This was no ordinary drop, was it? This one must have pissed your clients off good. What makes you say that, Mr. Finn? Well, why do you need him here? You're a sadistic bastard. You've never needed anyone to do your dirty work in the past. That's not relevant, Mr. Finn. But to satisfy your curiosity, my client wants him here. Mine's not to reason why. Meanwhile, back, the two of you are responsible for the safe return of 20 keys of pure cocaine to my client. Now, I'm going to spend ten minutes talking to the both of you nicely. But if I have to go into overtime, gentlemen, and miss my dinner engagement, well, I'm not going to be a happy bunny. In fact, I'm going to take one of you into the next room, put your head in a real big vice and squeeze the truth out of you. And let me tell you something. Seeing someone's eyes pop out of their head is not a pretty sight. This is a setup. This is a fucking setup. I should have known better. I mean, the syndicate hires me and Fenton here, not knowing us from Adam, and trusts us with a bag of their money to bring their coke back to them. This was an inside job. One of your boys sold you out. That's an interesting theory, Mr. Finn. But my client is convinced the missing coke is down to you two boys. This is bullshit. I'm not so stupid as to cross the syndicate. I've done drops like this a thousand times for other firms. Not armed, you haven't. Why this time, Mr. Finn? Why did you feel the need to be tooled up? By your swift change in mood, Mr. Finn, I can only assume that you know what's coming up next. You were both seen last night in the Falcon Cafe, and I bet you were doing all the talking. Good, I'm dying for a fag. Can I have one? Well, maybe not. So, you crow and I enjoy? That's the name to go by, man. State your business star. Can you help us? Me nah, no. All I know is that you think I can get you a couple of shooter. And can you? Look, don't waste my time, can you or not? I'm inventing I'm wasting our time here. Well, if your pussy clerk don't want to do business, you can fuck off, you know. Yeah? Fuck you. <gasps> Move, and you lose it, white boy. <laughs> Finn! Let's play a little game, Carl. Let's see if you is Babylon. Okay. Go on, do it. 
Oh, I want to see you do it here in front of all these witnesses. Finn, don't let him! Shut up, Fenton. Okay. Enough of the fucking foreplay. I'm not the old Bill, and nor is Fenton. Second the man. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Everybody's solid, you know. This is some heavy shit, you know. It's not like dealing rocks to a couple of upper-class honky niggas in Clapham Common. I hate honky niggas. <laughs> <laughs> what a blood clack you looking at now? Oh, well, well I, was, I, I was just wondering, um, can you recommend a good dentist? Nice try, bad guess. I'm not a dealer. So why the shooter? What happened? Answer I and I, no man. It's none of your concern. Now, can you help me or not? Uh -uh. Why serious, you know? We sold a dozen army automatics to a white boy a couple of months back. Said he was doing a bank job. I got to trust in this boy, you know. When I apprehend the pussy clap, we find out he's an informer for Babylon. Ross clap, fucker. So I. Uh, I'm speaking the Queen's English man, but you're not hear me. Him sleeping with the fishes, you know. You understand my concern? You don't want to vex me, you don't want to fuck with me. Understand that. We is the best. We get you what you want. We have no fear of Babylon. What do you want? Two shotgun? I'm talking about fucking shotguns. If I was, I'd be in a bassy bog picking one up now, wouldn't I? Italian Berettas. Fifteen shot mag, one in the pipe for me and Fenton here. You're talking about serious money here. What, the two handguns? When you deal with us, you're talking about quality. One of our competes go by the name of Stick. You saw the hang on some crazy bitch the other day. Thing jam on her twice. Thing have a mind of its own, go off when it want to. Thing is, the bitch love it. She love the unpredictable. You won't get that shit with us. Everybody know. You want quality tools? This is the party to come to. Yeah, well, it looks like a fucking Mickey Mouse operation to me. Now stop wasting my fucking time. Can you help me or not? You're tripping, man. What are you trip for? If you want a slime, we ain't got the time. Understand? US or European weapons? 45 or 9 millimeter? Cash or plastic? Cash. 9 mil. European. Grab yourself some food. They got everything here from sausage rolls to good old fashioned chips. Me know your aunties love chips with everything. By the way, you boys look like you can do with some pussy. You got them too. Do your nice discount. We'll be in touch. Respect. When you bought those guns from those black wannabes, you both must have thought, what a result. This is an opportunity to get out of the big holes you dug yourselves in. What holes? What are you talking about? I told you, we wouldn't cross the syndicate. We're not that stupid! Aren't you? Stupid, no. Desperate, yes. Mr Fenton, three months ago you lost a card game to a short con operator and owe £52,000 to the triads. I can smell desperation. And that's your motive. The first thing I learned to do in this line of work is to do your homework. So let's cut to the chase. I'm going to get the truth from you, Mr. Fenton, because I can smell a lie like a fart in a fucking car! Fuck you! Do you hear me? Fuck you! I'm sorry. I lost it there for a moment. I'll tell you everything. Can we start again? <laughs> Good boy. Now, what happened yesterday at the drop? Shit myself here, Finn. Why are we here? Are we meant to be in Orney Street? Yeah. What are we doing here? Orney Street's down there. What time you got? 2.55. Take this. I don't want it. I hate guns. Take it. Not a 
want you to stay here. You're not up to this. But we're supposed to go together. You're scared. Your hands are shaking. You've never done this before, have you? Of course I haven't. Whatever happens, save yourself. Finn? Finn! What did you see, Mr. Fenton? I said, what did you see? Nothing. I saw nothing. I was too far away. And you're going to stick by that, are you? Yeah. Oh, look, wait one moment. You're pissing me off, Mr. Fenton. Are you telling me you didn't see anything? Look, wait a minute. Don't waste my time, Mr. Fenton. You're giving me sweet F.A. I want the truth. Tell me, what did you see? Nothing. You saw Mr. Fink shoot them, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you? I saw nothing. I swear to you, I saw nothing. Oh, shit, and I'm sorry to fuck up your dream, but I'm no killer. You say something? Yeah. I said, go fuck yourself. Ever hear of a woman named Claire Lewis? No. No? Oh, yes, you have. She's your wife. Does the word bigamist mean anything to you? Let me explain. Ten years ago, you got married to Helen Roberts and conned her out of every penny she had. Then moved on to wife number two and did the same thing. Then three. Then four. Then came wife number five, Claire Lewis. Easy prey, or so you thought. But she was smarter than the rest and caught on fast. Two days after the wedding, you smashed her head in with a hammer, killing her. Or so you thought. She's alive. But you already knew that, didn't you? Fuck you. That's why you took the job. You're wanted for attempted murder. You need the money to get out of the country. But you got greedy. There was a reason why Mr Finn left you behind. And there is some truth to your story, but not the way you're telling it. What time you got? 2.55. Give me the gun, Fenton. I've got one of your own. Why? I said give it to me! I want you to stay here. But we're supposed to go together. Shut up! Don't move until I come and get you, no matter what. Got it? Finn? He left you there so he could kill Mr Fraser and Mr Preston without being seen. Then he was going to come back and kill you. He's lying, Fenton. Don't listen to him. He just wants you to say you saw me shoot him. No, Mr Fenton. I want the truth. Then you can walk out of here alive. Why didn't he want you to go with him? Ask yourself that. I could see I was scared. He could tell I was going to fuck it up. Bollocks. A man who preys on helpless women and takes every penny they've got. A man so ruthless he'd rather kill his own wife than walk away when he's found out. A man who doesn't give a shit about anyone but himself, telling you to hang back. I'll take care of it. Bullshit! I told Fenton to stay put because the whole setup was shit. The syndicate knew I was wanted by the police. They knew the triads were after Fenton. So why? Why hire us nobodies to pick up their dope? They didn't know us. That's why I sat out by myself, to check it out. And when I got there, they were already dead. Then the police showed up. So I did a runner. There were two of them. Uniform. They wouldn't give up. So I shot them both. Tell me you saw Finn shoot Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston and you're out of here. Cos I know you did. Tell me! No, no, no! Tell me! I saw, I saw! You no. better tell me what I want to know! Or what you want to fucking hear! <laughs> tell me! 
or so it will be a fucking day with the same gun that did Fraser and Presto. I saw him shoot him, 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 I saw him shoot him. Saw him shoot him. I don't understand. My employers have suspected Mr. McCann for quite some time now. Five months ago, they suspected him of embezzling £82,000 from them. But at that time, there was no proof. Then, two months ago, a shipment and £40,000 of cocaine went missing. Again, they suspected Mr. McCann. It was only when he picked up the gun, the same gun that killed Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston, that I realised that he was responsible for their deaths. Look, no, I still don't understand. The gun, Mr. Finn, the gun. There were three guns on the table. How did he know which gun killed Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston unless he'd killed them himself? and I'll let you live. What the fuck you doing, Finn? Shut the fuck up, Fenton! The money, if you please. I have no intention of giving you anything, Mr. Finn. I kiss your ass goodbye. Before you do away with me, Mr. Finn, consider this. If I do not report back to my employers, they will assume that you are responsible for killing Mr. Fraser, Mr. Preston, and Mr. McCann, for that matter. And I can assure you, Mr. Finn, you will both be dead before the week is up. If, on the other hand, you choose to ignore my advice, then may I suggest this. Shoot me in the forehead. Less pain. At 2200 hours, there will be a telephone call from the Syndicate to a phone box in Orkney Street. You will intercept that call, and you will report on what went on here. What the fuck did go on here, eh? Because I don't understand. Answer me! Where's the money? Where's the drugs? There were no drugs involved in this transaction. The Syndicate was buying documents from two computer hackers, Mr. Fraser and Mr. Preston, who had inadvertently come across some rather sensitive information relating to the workings of Yardy business, from drug pushing to murder. Anyone who has touched or seen these documents has been located and killed. The reason you, Mr. Finn, and you, Mr. Fenton, were hired is simple. Because your employees were faceless, and all instructions were given to you by telephone, if the police were waiting, the syndicate couldn't and wouldn't be connected. So who's got the documents now, then? That is a problem for my employers to solve. As I said before, Mr. Finn, I have no interest in who is responsible. I am here purely as an executioner. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you. 
Are you sure you brought enough men with you? Have you been? As well as can be expected. Safe. You got it? Yeah, I heard all about it, man. You doing McCann. You see, Finn ran the whole story through to the syndicate. You know, a lie is not effective unless the person lied to believes in it. So I guess that puts you in the clear, Palmer. Was McCann on to you? He was, wasn't he? The syndicate suspected Mr. McCann. But it was you who embezzled that money, wasn't it? What about the hijacking? You too? <laughs> you kill me, Palmer. You really do. Just tell me this. Why are you sending this back to us? When you could be sending it to someone else for what? At least ten times the amount? Because I believe in balance. Keeping the Yardies in the war. Without the war, I'd be out of a job. You're a weird man, Palmer. Tell me something. What would you have done if McCann had picked up the wrong gun? Threats are an indication of insecurity, Adams, and I have no place for them. Being undisciplined as you clearly are, I wonder do you recognize the fact that you are actually scared of me? Get in my way, and I'm going to kill you, Palmer. Check the whole building an hour ago. The place is deserted. Apart from Miss Swan, who's waiting for you in your office. Ryan is shadowing that floor. Our man behind the desk is watching the TV monitors on each floor. He'll sound the alarm if anything is wrong. Counting our man behind the desk, there are 11 people in the building. Sir, would you take a walkie-talkie, just in case? No, I don't want to be disturbed. I would like you to take one, sir. As I said, just in case. Look, Packer, there are eight of you. You do your job, and let me do mine. 
And if anyone comes within spitting distance of this building, shoot to kill. You hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you, Miss Swan, for coming in at such short notice, especially on a Sunday. It's not a problem, Mr. Jameson. What would I do without you, Miss Swan? What would your wife do without you, Mr. Jameson? Excuse me. Now he's got us working on a Sunday, he's taking a piss. I was talking to Wilson the other day. Who? Wilson. You know Wilson, the guy who got his leg blown up in the Falklands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good bloke. Well, he's heard through the grapevine that the old bastard's playing one-on-one -on -one with the syndicate. Shit, and now we've been dragged into this. If he weren't paying me, I'd do him myself a fucking wanker. You know, I got offered that security job at Mashal and Farnham. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sweet as a nut. Didn't take it. You didn't take it? Why not? Money was shit. Shit? <sighs> the missus ain't gonna like that. Yeah, well, fuck her. Think she's seeing somebody else anyway. Hey? You're joking. Michelle? <laughs> the last time I saw her, she was all over you like a rash. Yeah, well, she's obviously had some of that calamine lotion. Hey? Listen, I've been there, I know the signs. Little bits of paper with telephone numbers on. No more lovey-dovey dinners, just, are you going to work tonight, dear? Yeah, but hey, look, that don't mean nothing, does it? It's cos you haven't taken on that holiday you promised her. Yeah, for I remember she was in my fucking ear about it the other week. That's what it is. Yeah, well, you can't go on holiday unless you're working, and if you're working, you can't go on holiday. You can't win. <sighs> fucking women. Yeah. Hard tool floor, someone's coming up via the lift. Heading for floor seven. Ta- 
Hard's over. There's no answer from the man at the desk. Gunshots have been heard. We're taking the old man to safety. Over. Now the other one's moving. What the fuck's going on? Hard's the Packer and Jones. We're coming up via the stairs. for the oldest trick in the book. Men, eh? You can't live with them, but you sure can kill them. Guns to the ground, slowly. I said now! Do it. You too. Back up into that room. Come on, boys. Move it! I haven't got all day. Far enough. Fucking women. Beg your pardon? Oh, you smooth talker, you. I bet you always talk to women like that. Eh? Don't you? Do you ever wonder why you have to pay for it? Oh, wait a minute. It's this gun, isn't it? You all think that without this gun, I'm shit, right? Okay, then. Come on, then. Do you feel lucky? Punks? You used to be part of the shadow team, but he can't be. I saw him die. He's dead. Who or what are the shadows? Let's just say you all want to fuck with them, all right? Jesus Christ, he's left the bomb. He's going to blow us all the kingdom come. Lambert, all teams, we've got ourselves a bomb. Evacuate the building now. Over. You're dead, I saw you! with your arm, then your leg, then your other arm, then your rib cage, finishing off with a spinning roundhouse kick to the head, breaking your neck. Hmm? Sounds good. Well, 
works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, then tough titties. Right, let's begin by... <laughs> <laughs> get up here. The place is riddled with security men. Shut up! Which one's this, then? I can explain. I, I'm gonna sack that fucker on the desk. I gave that lazy sod on the desk 50 bloody quid. Told him not to tell you I was here. Told him it was our anniversary and I wanted to surprise you. What's going on here? Are you surprised, Michael? Are you surprised to see your wife standing here with a fucking gun in her hand? Yeah, so what are you going to do, hmm? I shoot us both? Well, are you? You don't have to do this, Mrs. Jameson. Yes, I do, you bitch! Don't you move! Don't you bloody move. I may be drunk, but I'm not blind. Do you realise what you've done? You've taken away my life. Can you understand that? Grace, please stop this. Shut up! You bastard! You bloody bastard! I gave you everything, Michael. My youth. My money. A warm home, three beautiful kids. Everything. And what did you give me? One affair after another. I had to face the press and my family and deny it ever happened. I was a laughing stock. My friends, they must have thought, how could she be so stupid? Well, it could be worse. Like, for instance, your fate. Grace, put the gun down. No. I'm going to kill you, then all my problems will be over. And so will mine. Look, we can talk about this. I, I don't love her. I love you. Always have, always will. Oh, you wanker. <laughs> Let's get this right. I could put a bullet between that bitch's eyes and it wouldn't mean a thing to you, is that right? Mike? Oh, Grace! Don't do Grace me! You have a choice. It's me or her, and I want your answer now. Worm your way out of that one, Mr. Jameson. Okay, look, wait. What happens if I choose her? And you're buggered. I'll kill her and I'll kill you. Oh, God. I don't believe you. Okay, what happens if I choose you? Then I'll kill her. We can both go. Grace, you're drunk. Now give me the gun. Otherwise, you'll do something you'll regret. I did that already. I married you. This is madness, Grace. So what do you say then? Why did I just shoot the son of a bitch? Oh. No! Ah! 
Hide their sex pot. Time to get yours. Oi, Palmer. Don't bother looking for the discs. I destroyed them. We spoke on the phone. I was hired to help you, Palmer, but my contract changed hands. To her. She was told to take out both you and Jameson. I'm here just in case you failed. It's too bad you in my face, but that's the way. <laughs> You talk too much. Should have shot me while you had the chance. Stupid and unprofessional. Adams? Don't talk to me about being unprofessional. The syndicate are on to you. They know. They know you killed Preston. But I'm afraid you fucked up. You stupid bastard. You did. You understand. And the best they can do is send you and her to kill me. Mama. They know everything. About everything. Who she been spending her nights with. Thank you. Armed police, freeze! Drop your weapon! Freeze. This isn't America, you know. Good evening, Mr. Carter. I believe we have a mutual problem. A certain Mr. Palmer? Honey, I'm home.
my god, Matt! You scum! You fucking scum! You bastard! You little bastard! I am going to kill you! Do you hear me? Oh. Matt, it only happened once! I know it will only happen once! I get it. What on earth is all the rumpus for, Mr. Palmer? It's positively disgraceful. Do you realize what time it is? This is inexcusable. I will inform the caretaker at the first opportunity I get. Good God, man, have you been drinking? Get lost, your pompous ass. was Mr. Hewlett. Look, it, it, it's okay, Matt. Just oh. sit down. Matt, sit down. Oh, my God. You've been shot. I've got to get you to a hospital. No. No hospitals. They'll find me there and kill me, like at the business centre. I did it for us. I did it for you. Did you sleep with him? Matt, I... The truth. Please. Tell me the truth. Yes. Why? Matt, it didn't mean anything, I swear. I love you. Forgive me, please. Say I forgive Kerry. I won't do it again. It was just a one-off. Say it. Say I forgive Kerry. It just happened. I didn't plan it. It was just the once. I swear it was just the once. <gasps> no, man, no, give me a gun. No. No, man, no, stay awake. Matt, please. I'm gonna call an ambulance. Don't you die. He ain't dead, he's just passed out. Lance, we've got to get him to a hospital. Well, you got two hopes there. There's no open bobo. Lance! Look, we can't take him to a hospital. The syndicate will find him and they'll kill him. What are you talking about? What's a syndicate? Your boyfriend is a professional killer. <laughs> he is dying here and you're playing stupid fucking games! <laughs> you think I'm winding you up? This is no game. Matt's an assassin. He kills people for money. Computer salesman, not a hitman! No, I didn't say he was a hitman, I said he was an assassin. There is a difference, you know. A hitman kills people, anyone for a price. An assassin murders important figures, politicians, monarchs. Look, I should know, because Matt's commissioned me to write a book about him. Oh, come on. Why do you think he's been shot? Explain the blood. You don't get shot selling computers. You're gonna have to face it. He's a professional killer. You don't need a gun to sell a computer. The poor sod. 
He was going to retire. But then what? Oh, my guess is they found out or he's crossed them. Look, when you join the syndicate, it's for life. Nobody ever leaves. Not alive, anyway. Look in that black case. You're not going to find a saxophone in there. You're going to find the ready arsenal! The tools of the trade! He needs a doctor, for Christ's sake. I'm not going to just watch him die, Lodge. You've got to help me! Look, I'm very sorry. He's my friend too. But don't you tell me what to do. This is not my fault. If we take him to the hospital, the syndicate will find him and they'll kill him. If we don't, he's going to die anyway. He doesn't have any choice. Look, why should I give a ruddy monkeys? He just tried to fucking kill me a minute ago. That is because he caught us in bed, you fucking moron. Yeah, don't I fucking know it. You dirty little stop out. Just one drink and you were mine. Oh, just like that. You're going to have to face it, girl. You're just a tart. What did you say? I said you want another drink. Oh, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Why not? Do you know, Lance, you're kind of cute. Yeah, and you're kind of drunk. <laughs> Give me a C. Give me a U. Give me a T. Give me an E. You're cute. <laughs> well, I think you're cute. But I'm in love with my man. But if I had to shag a bloke right now, like in this pub, if it was a life and death thing, I'd do it with you. Why? Because you're Matt's best friend and you're cute. <laughs> so, what do you think of me? I, I, I think you're a, a very nice young lady. I think you're a very, very nice young lady. <laughs> oh, silly. Oh, I mean physically. I think you're a babe. <laughs> no. No. Oh, come on. No, stop making me. Come on. Come on. You were coming on to me. Look, I'm running out of time. Are you going to help me or not? Oh, oh now isn't that touching? Now what does that tell me? That tells me one of two things. That either one, you love Matt enough to kill for him, or two, you just don't fully understand this situation. I hear that your boyfriend is a fucking killer! And when those people who shot the son of a bitch in the first place get in here, they're gonna kill us too! So, what's it gonna be then? Are you gonna shoot me? Alright, let's say you do. Then, what do you do? 
You throw them over your shoulder, get all that blood and guts over you, go outside, you hope the neighbours don't hear you, well they've probably called the police by now, stick them in the back of your car, get down to the hospital where every bullet wound is reported to the police, they're going to bang him up for 20 years, or the syndicate will find him and they'll kill him and then, oh dear, that's the end of your beautiful relationship and you're back in the gutter where you belong! We're not fucking talking about me! He's dying here! Oh, I'm very sorry! But you just don't fucking get it, do you? I do fucking get it. This is not my fucking problem! I don't know what to do. There is nothing we can do. I say let's just get out of here. Uh, we can go to a hotel, lie low for a bit. Matt gave me loads of money. We can go to America. You like America, don't you? Start anew. Come on. Come, come with me. Stay where you are, Lance. You're lying. Don't come any closer or I'll shoot you, I swear. Do you want to hear something from the memoirs of Matthew Palmer? The first person you shoot is the hardest. But I'm not saying you don't get over it. The second one, well, it's easier. You don't think so much about how that bullet is messing up his body. Then after, say, about five or six successful hits, you're lying in bed one night and suddenly, boom, it all comes flooding back to you. You go on this guilt trip and start thinking about how they're kicking up the proverbial daisies. And in your dreams, you see the last contorted expression on their faces when they knew it was all over. And then, after a while, the dreams become less vivid Suddenly, it's just like any normal job. You know what they say? It's a tough job. Yeah, but somebody's got to shoot it. <laughs> you should write black comedy. You know, I used to think those... those films with Michael Caine, that it was a load of crap. You know the ones I mean? The Ipcris files, Get Carter. You couldn't just shoot someone and think nothing of it. But it's true. Eventually, you just get numb to it all. Michael Caine's the bee's knees. <laughs> so, what I've got here is a fucking Morris Micklewhite fan. But do you always use your browning on a contract? I mean, don't you use a rifle? Never used a knife? I always use my browning, unless there's no way of getting within six feet of a victim. Knives. Well, they're messy. If you're going to use a knife, you're aiming to cut a major artery. And that gets messy. Blood is very sticky, very unpredictable, and difficult to get off whites. Yeah, well, you're using the wrong washing powder, man. <laughs> what about your hands? Have you ever killed a geezer with your hands? No. Well, I almost did once. S stop writing. This is just between me and you. Once, I almost killed my girlfriend. It was after a really long day at the office, so to speak. She'd just left college and told me she wasn't going back. Uh, she was going to some nightclub or other, dressed up to the nines. Well, I'm sorry, I just lost it. <laughs> Whoa, hit the fucking brakes, man. You try to choke her to death, and then you end up shagging her. Oh, bloody hell. I don't shag. I make love. Now every time we make love, I have to squeeze her neck. Now that is one fucked up bitch. No. Apparently this kind of thing is not uncommon. It's more common in men than in women. I read about it somewhere. It's like, remember that guy, found dead, naked in his own home with a plastic bag over his head. No sign of forced entry, no fingerprints, and no reason why anyone should want to kill him. I don't understand it fully, but the conclusion is that it's a, a sexual fetish called sexual asphyxia. Some people can only become sexually aroused by near strangulation. Being close to death is the only way that some people can have an orgasm. If you stop air going to the brain, i.e. by putting a plastic bag over your head or by strangulation, then at the moment of orgasm it puts you on a high, like being on drugs or something. Where did you read all this then? I don't know. Cosmo, I think. 
Did you ever read it? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I, well, I don't read any of it. I just look at the pictures. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How old is she? 22. You've got a toy girl. Bollex. <laughs> Pull the other one. I've got two of them. How long have you known her? About two years. Where did you two meet? I was, uh, I was coming home from work one evening, and she was lying on the pavement. At first I thought she was drunk, but as I got closer I realised that she'd been beaten up. Her lip was swollen and her face was black and blue. And you know what really ticked me off? People just walked by as if nothing had happened. Well, I was going to call an ambulance, but then I thought she'll just end up back in the streets. So I took her in. A moment of madness. A, a moment of madness? Yeah. Don't you ever do that? Do something crazy that at the time seems perfectly logical? What's your name? You shouldn't work the streets, you know. It's not good for your health. What's your name? Palmer. Call me Matt. Thanks, Matt. And from that moment on, I was hooked. She was only meant to stay with me a week. I made her go back to college. I paid for that. She loves me. All that time she stayed with me, she's never taken advantage. I'd be away in a job for months, and I always expected that I'd come back and find a note saying thank you and goodbye. But she was always there waiting for me with open arms. Did you ever find out who gave her the beating? Yeah, some pimps. They won't be bothering her again. What the fuck this about, man? You will leave Kerry Wyman alone. Kerry Wyman? Kerry Wyman? Who the fuck are you, a daddy? Get the fuck out of my yard, man! What bitch in chat, man? She's a little girl from the street, you know? The one that tried to teeth your grass, man! Oh, her! Uh, the one you beat the shit out of! She belonged to us, man! Not anymore. Ah! Ah! Eat him! Cut his ras! Eat him, you pussy cat! Mama cat, cut the ras cat! Oh. Kill him! <laughs> It is! Oh. Your pussy cat! Ah. Shit! Remind me to never piss you off. Oh, I did remember your birthday this year, didn't I? I did remember your birthday, yeah. Did you kill him? No. I only kill when I'm doing a job. Oh, good rule, that. Good fucking rule. Do you know what her favourite song is? What? Sugar Sugar by the Archies. Oh, you lucky bastard. That, that is a top song. <laughs> Sugar, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Does she know what you do for a living? I should, Coco. She thinks I'm a computer salesman. Tune into Sanity FM, man. I'm telling you the truth. The gun, the hole in the stomach. He even told me what turns you on. That kind of thing is very personal. Love's a killer, isn't it? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, oh, give us a tune, man. <laughs> How about what kind of fool am I? <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> the 
this is the way you like it, isn't it? So this is the way you're going to get it, only this time all the way. <laughs> Let go of her. <laughs> you're dead. You're not meant to be alive. I do feel a little under the weather. I appear to have another hole in me. <laughs> What's shit? And comes in several bloody bits. <laughs> Give up your brains. <sighs> okay. Let's get it over with. For the last time, at the count of three. One, two, goodbye, Lance. Three. <laughs> what is it with you and guns? Excuse me. Oi, Palmer. You've given us Shadow Men a bad name. Freeze, Palmer. I mean it. Freeze! Freeze. This isn't America, you know. Shit!